So thank you very much for this uh, presentation. Um, and uh, right now I, I, I see it's in, this is PowerPoint, so I just see the presenter's mode. I don't see any of you, <laughs> so this is very weird. Um, but uh, so Fridini, you just enter it and you will do their part as well. Um, so this is a shared presentation between myself and Frini or Efrosini. Um, and so, uh, as said, I'm director of, of this uh, MPDSD program, Architecture Planning Beyond Sustainability. And uh, I work at the Division of Urban Design and Planning at Chalmers. Um, and I'm currently um, examiner for both this social inclusion studio, design studio, and the Dare to Build uh, uh, course for architects, um, so which we will be talking about here. And uh, Frini. Um, yeah, I am an architect. I help Emilio as a project assistant and a teacher in Dare to Build, and I was a former student of his in the master's program. I, I remember you wanted to record the session, uh, if not, not mistaken. Yeah, it is, it is recording. Okay, yeah, great. It's already so, recording. Okay. Um, yeah, so this, uh, this presentation goes through uh, this sort of a journey um, between um, the uh, social inclusion design studio for our master program, and which is a, a long design studio um, in the autumn, and how this has created an opportunity for us to, to start the Dare to Build initiative. Um, so first, uh, as about this social inclusion studio uh, in a nutshell, um, it's a studio that is has its own facilities uh, also uh, placed in these um, uh, neighborhoods in the northeastern parts of Gothenburg, which is uh, uh, um, the, the neighborhoods of the um, Million Home Program, um, which is a, a program from the 60s and 70s, uh, the building of, of housing, uh, massive housing. Um, and with a lot of, of this uh, uh, construction being done in the suburbs of, of big cities. Uh, and today these are areas that are facing um, social and economic segregation. There are areas with over 80% of immigrant pro uh, ba uh, background population um, and uh, a lot of uh, development uh, inequalities. Um, and as I said, we have this, uh, this uh, um, uh, you say these facilities working with design projects um, uh, in these areas and uh, with these projects and with the students we try to work a lot with this development of uh, the questions of the social role of the architect um, and methods uh, working with methods of participation and co-creation so we involve uh, over 70 different stakeholders that uh, live or operate in the area and NGOs and uh, working also with feministic pedag pedagogies of, of collaborative learning. Um, so this uh, often we have been even exploring a distance-based uh, uh, development of this type of projects with all the stakeholders involved. Um, and here in our presentation, you can see also, you can follow these QR codes uh, for further information, but this is a collage from the exhibition from this last autumn's um, um, run of the course, um, where we had eight different projects of out of the 28 uh, students uh, and uh, involving all these different stakeholders and the projects are in different areas of, um, and uh, we have had projects uh, this autumn uh, working with uh, waste management situations, uh, the dreams of youth in the local school for the renovation of the school, um, um, the yeah the, the redesign of a of a square that has been uh, much threatened by different types of uses that are not uh, lifting the, the qualities of it. Um, a few projects uh, exploring the the, the challenges of communities in, in under the pandemics, uh, the renovation of the tram station, um, and even a, a project about an outdoor parkour track for um, children. Then. Um, so this is from this year, but this course has been existing for about 12 years. And about six years ago in 2016, uh, we started this, uh, uh, we had this opportunity to be involved in a, a bigger European project uh, that explore opportunities for um, um, adults, um, uh, women and men in, living in these areas to reach out for 
uh, job market and um, edu higher uh, education. Uh, here we collaborated with the unemployment office and other agencies of education. Uh, and we had also the opportunity to come in contact with this uh, architecture design collective uh, called um, On Off Berlin, uh, which um, among others, I think one of the involved, uh, two of the involved in this uh, uh, workshop are part of, and also Samuel Carvalho has uh, been making a presentation for you. Um, so we've been working with Sam and Bruno and, and uh, Eduardo in some of these projects since then. And this created this opportunity to develop design and build practices in our autumn uh, studio. Um, the first of our iterations have been uh, a bit uh, more on exploring these opportunities in the transformation of public space. Uh, this first one is uh, exploring this uh, a transformation of the local square in Hamarkulan, just in front of where we have uh, our offices and, and workspaces. Um, using uh, mainly um, yeah, recycled material and, and recovered from, um, from the local recycling unit. So you can see structures made out of uh, uh, reused bathtubs and wooden pallets clearly in the, in the image. Uh, this was a year when Freeney was also part of, of the team. Um, and this was a one week workshop. And the next year we had another one week workshop where we worked with uh, different um, local organizations, five different ones that had this uh, request for uh, mobile uh, furniture that kind of expands in different ways and provides for different uh, uh, kind of actions or activities in public space. Uh, you can see a juice bar, you can see a, a, a workshop uh, structure for children, um, something to support um, the local uh, art hall exhibitions and vernissages or a, a mobile repair bicycle station. And these are different organizations um, behind each of these uh, boxes or units. Um, in 2016, we also had the opportunity in through that collaboration, uh, European project to launch uh, a little bit broader and more permanent projects as well. And, uh, still, again, this is uh, in the studio in the autumn. It's a, a 15 weeks long studio, uh, meaning students working um, uh, with these projects uh, towards the winter. And um, yeah, and the design phase of these projects are uh, were about three weeks in the winter. Um, I'm collaborating with the locals. Uh, you can see here in the picture, um, Mahmoud, for instance, that through this uh, project uh, in Berkhan got the chance to, to get a job uh, afterwards. So, and this project was a, a, a pavilion um, working with community spaces and placemaking and focusing on, on gender aspects as this was supporting a local uh, group uh, of women uh, that meet uh, beside uh, these uh, facilities. The next year we had a couple of projects exploring other uh, aspects. Uh, this one is a more into child perspective and place identity. Uh, it's an outdoor uh, uh, kind of climbing structure for uh, a little bit older group of children. Uh, here we work with uh, uh, the Lisbon-based collective, uh, collective ware warehouse. Um, and uh, the same with actually the pavilion that you just saw. Uh, and in this, uh, um, project has unfortunately been dismantled because it has been so much used that it was in, in uh, bad shape and difficulty to keep it maintained even more. But um, the, the concept is based on this idea of a meteor that has landed from outer space. And this was co-designed uh, by children um, from the local schools in a quite long process also in the winter. Um, and in parallel to that project in the same year, we, we had another group uh, here again with Onof um, and with Eduardo and, and Sam, uh, working with the aspects of circular economy, recycle, we use. So in the area, there was the need of, of uh, facilities for um, supporting the communities, uh, kind of the reuse and the repairing of furniture and uh, bicycles and so on. So this is a, a project called Fixoteket, and it's the fa first phase of, of this project. Um, these type of projects have created a lot of uh, um, a lot of challenges for us, um, being run in the autumn and towards the winter, uh, and students having to deal with uh, a lot of uh, 
uh, yeah, low temperatures and basically not being very uh, motivational to, to work in, in such conditions. And that's when we uh, had the chance to, to think about what about creating some sort of a summer course that basically takes one of the projects that is co-designed in, in the autumn course into a process of design and build uh, for a summer course called Dare to Build. And, and here also uh, was at the same time as in our department, um, architecture and, and civil engineering got together in one department. So we also got this idea of creating this as an opportunity for uh, collaboration um, between architects and engineers. So we looked at these aspects of the industry um, needs for uh, collaborative working practices. Um, also the aspect of uh, equipping our um, students with better communication skills and um, in their disciplines. Um, and also, the, also their, the empathy connected to uh, this type of projects. Um, and then coming up with this uh, more uh, innovative design-based uh, courses. Uh, here's a bit of a, a map of the team involved. So I am the examiner for a course uh, which is based on uh, architects uh, uh, or for architects. Uh, it's there to build for architects. And my colleague Angela Sasek is the examiner for, for a, a there to build for, for engineers. Um, and the project coordinator um, is Shay Hage, is my, my colleague from, from the building technology department, uh, engineer and uh, also a construction project manager. And um, we also have Sam Carvalho here um, from ONOF and also from Gothenburg City. Um, and also Frini, as you can see, have been involved as a project assistant and now project manager uh, for the last three years. Um, and then uh, we also have been having a collaboration with uh, the Rice University in Houston, Texas, the OEDK pro program for uh, industrial engineering students that have been uh, traveling to Gothenburg and participating in our design and build projects in the summer. And Professor Larry Tubes, which is a space architect working for NASA for many years and also involved in, with expertise on, on design processes and CDIO. So, um, so I was explaining a little bit about this journey coming from the social inclusion and then into there to build. And on the other side of this team, there is this other journey coming from the experience of participation of Chalmers in the Solar Decathlon, uh, the construction of the HSB Living Lab, uh, which is a project at campus um, about uh, sustainable co-living. Uh, and so this there to build becomes a merge of this type of experiences from more tech and engineering research and sustainable building technology combined with uh, community participation, social inclusion, segregation, um, uh, yeah, placemaking and uh, this career and job creation opportunities for uh, the locals uh, involved in the project. This is more about the boring stuff. So uh, every course has have this kind of learning objectives and uh, here it's collaboration and the local impact on communities, uh, skills, the co-creation aspect, um, the connection of sustainability from theory to practice and also uh, this uh, real context experience provided for our students in architecture and civil engineering. And then here more as a rough structure of how the Dare to Build is. So a project from the Social Inclusion Design Studio in the autumn uh, around uh, February is being uh, selected and uh, taken into a project team that develops it further and for the start of the summer course. And, and the summer course has a total of five weeks, a first week, which is more the design and, and preparing a building um, phase, and then going into a more, um, a longer a kind of period of building of three to four weeks um, that, uh, that is on site and following all these kind of regulations, safety. So a, a really big uh, amount of the learning for, for common for, for architects and, and engineer students in this uh, there to build is also related to pro the construction project management uh, uh, aspects. Um, 
yeah, and this, this structure is created for the total of the six master programs involved. So it's two in architecture and four in engineering that uh, are in our uh, department that are uh, able to participate in these courses. And but the amount of students uh, vary every year that uh, that attend. So um, yeah, the, the, before I, I pass to to Frini, I will just uh, introduce the pilot year in 2018. So we picked on the Fixotech project that I showed briefly before and developed it further to stage two. And um, we gathered along the different stakeholders involved and. Um, I've talked about on off and rice, uh, uh, but we have been having connection to Bustad Bulago, which is a local municipality owned uh, housing company that owns most of the, of, of the of the apartments buildings in in this area called Hamakulan. Um, and then uh, also the Hiros Esfriani is a tenants union, so it's the the tenants union is a very strong uh, element in Sweden that you, that connects all the the tenants that live in in rental apartments, um, or that is an opportunity, some sort of a, a, a big uh, national association, um, and also the the a, a, an agency from the municipality of Gothenburg that works with uh, the aspects of recycling and uh, uh, waste management and so on. So they are basically. The, the stakeholders, the receivers, or the, the ones that would be running this uh, fixotech facilities for uh, recycling and um, and repairing uh, stuff. So yeah, uh, so this was the pilot project for uh, what became Dare to Build uh, one year later, and this was about adding uh, an extra space for the fixotech kit that was built uh, in the autumn of the or winter of the same year. And uh, the goal was to uh, build this recycling station for all the material uh, that uh, the fixo ticket, the main fixo ticket was um, discarding. And uh, that was also the main uh, uh, theme, recycling in general. So everything or almost everything that we used that year was uh, recycled material. For example, the containers you see here are recycled shipping containers um the um, this pergola uh, construction here is made out of ventilation pipes that were discarded from uh, the main campus our um, our university and uh here you can see some more um pictures so yeah basically this would be a recycling uh station and uh, the good thing about this is that uh, it had it's very used uh, by the community actually there's uh, almost 20 bicycles kids with bicycles running there every day to uh, uh, fix them and uh, many people also construct instruments uh, now in these spaces and here you can see a picture from um, uh, construction phase, we had to do a lot of uh, groundwork before we were able to uh, start building all these uh, cool things. And yeah, this was the final result, basically. So the next one. Uh, was in 2019. Um, it's called the day, the tale of Yetzos uh, Forest. It's a small forest area in uh, another one of the suburbs of Gothenburg. Uh, it's actually known for having um, important uh, biodiversity there. It's home of uh, uh, special uh, species of uh, woodpecker, and. Uh, that was uh, one of the key themes uh, for this project. So uh, in the autumn, what the student group did was develop uh, different characters, uh, different stakeholders for this project. So they had the mushroom, the frog, um, the plants, and uh, the woodpecker and the, the wilderness. And uh, they asked kids uh, to assume the role of each of these uh, characters, as you can see here in the picture, they even made masks for them so that they get uh, 
into it and uh, imagine how these characters would behave in the forest and uh, help them design uh, their uh, spaces. So we took this and uh, this concept and we turned it into an outdoor classroom, uh, which is basically a space used by uh, schools and school kids during uh, class hours as an alternative uh, classroom or as a, also a sitting area for uh, users of the forest in general. And uh, this year's uh, themes were basically biomimicry, uh, ecological design, and a special focus on the post-humanist uh, perspectives of this. So how can, how can we design when we perceive uh, non-human stakeholders as equal um, in this process? And uh, we used uh, all the materials we used from, from the wood to uh, some paints where uh, uh, eco-friendly and biodegradable. So this classroom, after some uh, uh, years pass, will, will have um, disappeared or reclaimed by, by nature. And um, here you can see on the left how it began uh, based on the project in the autumn and uh, how, what it became um, after where to build. And this is also some pictures from uh, the construction phase. In, in that year, we had about 40 uh, people working on site, uh, most of them students from, uh, from Chalmers, both engineers and architects, uh, some students from Rice University in Texas, and some uh, local youth working, as, uh, working in summer jobs that were, um, uh, that were joining us every day. And last year, uh, we did uh, a project again on the square that Emilio showed you before. And uh, this, uh, this was actually done in a week instead of three weeks because we had to adapt to uh, the pandemic uh, conditions. So it was three weeks design, one week uh, building. And uh, our goal here was to build three uh, separate movable devices. Uh, that would run along the square, as you can see in the video. And uh, our key themes were um, placemaking, uh, mobile architecture, and uh, material innovation. And actually about material innovation, um, we had the help of another professor from, uh, from Chalmers, uh, who is very much into um, uh, the research on uh, concrete. So we had uh, a new... Uh, we implemented actually a new way of um, building with concrete where you add fiber instead of uh, uh, a lot of like steel reinforcement to make it stable. So, yes, we, here you can see some of the more um, technical stuff. So, these three uh, devices had, had different concepts also. So, this one. Uh, on the right, uh, it was uh, based on the concept of a mountain and how uh, rocks and earth make this kind of like rough um, edges. Uh, this began as a, a reference to a crystal, and I don't know if we have pictures here, but they have put lighting uh, installations inside, so in the evening it can glow. and. Uh, the third one, so this is the mountain. Uh, do we have any pictures? Yeah, we have one more. This is, yeah, this is the, the wave. So this is the um, movable furniture with uh, the concrete. Right. Uh, lost you for a second. The concrete. Yeah, the concrete with the, the fiber uh, reinforcement. It's two, two, about two centimeters thick uh, concrete uh, layer there. Yeah, and uh, so far there, there's not a single crack uh, on it, and it's, uh, it's been used. And uh, on the bottom, you can see the, the crystal one being uh, uh, inaugurated by our students. So back yeah. to you. And yeah, to conclude uh, this, uh, uh, the um, uh, 
this, this is a, a resume of some reflections of what we, we have learned from this experience so far. And it's this uh, connection between features and, and uh, place making, the, uh, the aspect of working with a, towards an, an inclusive city, um, to work with the urban um, with urban design projects that focus on, on these community spaces, uh, on this type of suburbs facing urban segregation, um, and uh, working also with complex participatory processes uh, with the different stages of, of co-creation, as I saw in the, in the beginning, uh, and coll collaborating with a, a wide multitude of, of stakeholders and community organizations. Uh, always try to to work uh, from the top uh, uh, with the, from the top down and meeting uh, bottom up initiatives um, so we usually call it the middle up middle down and and uh, then also working towards this uh, 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 goals of uh, social responsibility and uh, the reassessing of, of, of roles of, of our professions but also importantly our institutions what it means to have uh, an institution like Chalmers, uh, which is many, um, a lot like many universities, focus on, on a campus when it is um, acting and operating in this type of, of neighborhoods, uh, which is obviously very problematic. Uh, then also uh, the aspects of cross-disciplinarity when having architects and engineers working together uh, the, and what type of challenges that brings. Um, and, uh, and then aspects regarding the projects, we have been working a lot with, uh, like we said, a circular economy, um, the aspects of sustainability and the impact uh, on, the, on the environment, uh, post-humanistic concepts and so on. Um, and also this innovation to bring technology uh, to meet uh, um, this uh, circularity and sustainability aspects. Um, yeah, so this is our presentation uh, for this year. We are now on, on the current planning for an outdoor, um, for building an outdoor uh, parkour track for uh, kids in one of these areas. And we are pretty much looking forward and are super excited to have met the stakeholders last week and this week again, uh, having already a team of students involved in helping us with design phase. Um, so yeah, um, we we are still learning. Uh, we are basically yeah still in the beginning of our uh, journey. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Emilio and and Efrazini. Uh, I think we can open now the debate for two or three questions and then uh, listen to the next presentation and in the end have a debate. But if someone has uh, immediate que immediate questions that wants to just to put to some specific things on the presentation. Uh, we can now have one, two or three questions. Uh, I don't know if I can, sorry. Yes, Leon Leonore? <laughs> okay, I think it was Leonore asking a question, was it? Yeah, but I yeah, have but a, I a problem, problem. sorry. Uh, Um, pode escrever, se calhar. Escreve, é mais fácil. No, I can talk now. Uh, so, I just have one question, and is about the project of Dare to Build. And I would like to know, like, 21 or next year, maybe, uh, have you tried to um, do the next one? Like, another addiction? Addiction? Yeah. Did you, mean... you understand? Is, yeah, the, uh, yeah sorry. the question of what what is the next edition it's like uh can we participate in your project and do the next edition do you have the next edition planned and because of covid is going to happen or yeah i can uh so the there is a it's, it's a complicated uh, answer but so First, from in terms of COVID, what we decided for this year, for the next edition, which will be in June, um, is that uh, we have this current situation, the city of Gothenburg is under massive reconstruction. There is buildings popping up everywhere, it's crazy. And, and you almost don't notice where is COVID affecting the building industry when you see that. And 
So what we came up as an idea is that we will involve some consultants from the building industry to uh, teach us and our students how to manage a construction building site under a pandemic. So that will be uh, uh, one of the central topics of the, of the process. And also we have some experience from last year, um, project this one on the square was also built uh, during the pandemic. So, um, but since our projects are all built um, outdoors and outside and, and often in quite big areas, uh, so there is uh, usually a, a good uh, maintenance of, of the distances. The other thing I want to mention is also in Sweden, uh, the way it deals with the pandemic, maybe you've seen in the news, it's much more uh, to be maybe polite, say sloppy, but uh, <laughs> then that makes <laughs> yeah. that, uh, that it also allows for us to plan more accordingly, I would say. Um, and uh, yeah, and when it comes to uh, participation, we are always open and uh, to embrace uh, volunteers to be joining us. Uh, but when it comes to taking the courses and getting uh, credits uh, for them and so on, that requires a registration and fee paying system and all of this, uh, which is possible to solve, but it's uh, good to be aware about. Uh, yeah, of course, it's more complicated. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> but the, the interesting regarding plans for the future that I want to share is also we are planning to have this uh, there to build as a, an integrated uh, studio uh, during the spring. So in the last part of the spring, uh, it becomes integrated in the in the master program rather. And that means also that we may have a lot more uh, participants from our own students. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, I have a question reg regarding the um, the program uh, i i mean uh, do you uh, how do you decide decide what you are going to build is there a, is there an order for specific or you make a research and then you decide how how, how does that process work so the the whole process starts in the in the autumn around september uh, when the new uh, social inclusion uh, studio starts uh, and i'm also the examiner and, and the whole kind of planning and organizing that studio and I have uh, contact with a wide network of different stakeholders and uh, the, everything starts in a, in a co-creation uh, process, which goes on to the, the, new, the different stages of co-creation. I'm, I'm, I can quickly share the screen. Uh, you see here down, um, you see the screen or, yeah, yeah, good. So that you see the, down here in this slide, uh, we go from the co-initiation process and... Emilio, so we, yeah. we see your Zoom. Okay, so that's not the right screen then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, down here in this uh, link, this is a model of co-creation that comes from a research uh, paper that inspired us. And uh, we invite to a, an initiation workshop uh, a series of stakeholders to come with ideas and about things to happen in the areas. And these are sometimes, uh, some of them are top-down stakeholders, others are bottom-up, so some citizens and associations. And in that workshop, uh, they meet our students and they start the projects, uh, kind of cooking them together and start to initiate collaboratively with the stakeholders, the, the projects. Uh, and then the students make a, a project selection. So out of maybe 16 projects, eight projects far, uh, start. And during the whole autumn, all of these projects involve a complex uh, co-creation participatory methods and uh, of analysis of, of co-design, uh, implementation through uh, uh, exhibition and finalizing projects and then a co-evaluation as well. And then we have at the end of the semester between six to eight projects every year, uh, which goes into our uh, selection of which one will be the one building. So all these different stakeholders get the opportunity to make an offer and to, um, yeah, to show their interest for a uh, design and build uh, part of that project. Yeah, hope I, I answered that question. Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting process. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, do you have any? Do we have any more questions? Alguém tem mais alguma questão que está a se colocar? I'd like to say um, hi to Bruno and Eduardo and thank them for everything. <laughs> yeah.
Okay, so maybe we move on to the next presentation so we can have some time to for a debate at the end. Uh, and I will now briefly in Portuguese present the next uh, speakers. Uh, os próximos oradores são uh, o Laurent Chassou e a Agathe Mignon, que são ambos também arquitetos um, de, de Lausanne e que nos vêm falar de, de uma experiência também tal como eu tinha dito no início, de também ela uma experiência de, 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 de laboratorial feita no âmbito da escola, neste, neste caso na Ecole Politécnique Federal de Lausanne, EPFL, e a, 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 o laboratório de, de que eles nos vêm falar chama-se Alice Lab, que, que no, no qual ambos participaram como co-organizador, como co-organizadores e, e mentores, uh, juntamente com o Dieter Dietz, uh, durante os, entre os anos de 2015 uh, e 2019. Um, e vou... Ok, perdão, peço desculpa. Uh, ok, okay. Laurent e Agathe, se vous plaît, vous pouvez prendre le Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we'll do a, a presentation which is called uh, Protostructure, Construction and Landscape. Uh, and this will go through um, three uh, main phases. First, uh, Agathe will start with the let's say, the, the, the basics behind this idea of protostructure that she will explain. Um, she's, a, let's say, of course, a, a specialist about the theme as she did a, a PhD on this specific topic inside the laboratory before uh, teaching as well in the, in the first year design class. Um, and then the second part, we'll uh, quickly go through um, the whole teaching program that we, we did put in place with the students through the, the whole first year of architecture. Um, that brings us to uh, this construction that we did in the, at the end of, uh, of each year. And then I will go a bit more deeply in one of these last phase, uh, specifically the, the one we did in Evian Les Bains in France. Uh, it was in uh, 2018-19. And uh, we'll try to explain the, the different phases we, we go through um, to, to get to those, uh, those building we do. So uh, Agathe will first start. Yes, so I will start with a few words about uh, Alice Lab and introduce you to the concept of protostructure. Um, then I will leave the talk to Laurent for the more, more detailed presentation about pedagogical program. Um, um, maybe first, it's a first view of Alice Lab. So Alice Lab includes different sectors of activity, teaching, fundamental research and design research with about 20 people. Um, teams and timelines are different between an academic school year with 200 students and maybe the four years of an individual PhD. But we have many transversal moments to exchange about common subject and question, and sometimes the occasion to share project between the different units. Um, the teaching team works with yeah. Oh, okay. works, I, I got uh, we, the screen is black. We see oh. black screen. Okay. Sorry. Um, je crois que tu sais pas. Tu dois pas mettre uh, diaporama. Tu dois mettre uh, plein écran. Ça va, ça va. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, so the teaching team works with students from the first first year to the last one, but the first year stays the most important part of our activity. It's no more than 10 years that the Professor Dieter Dietz and Alice team teach the project to the first year students of the architecture section of EPFL. To have an idea, it represents more than 200 students per year, as you can see uh, on this classroom class photo of last year. All the, the first year students in, uh, in just one photo. So the number of students it's, is important for the two main issues of Alice teaching. The first concern the collective aspect of the project. 
how to do a project with others and how to understand that the architectural practice is a collective one. And in the second point, the second question maybe is the two main issue of of our activity in teaching um, concerning the way of teaching. How to frame the project in a non-directive way? How to do a common support for these 200 students without directing the development of individual projects? What is it important for this first year of, stu of studying? For the first years uh, in Alice, we used a literal translation of these two problematics. Uh, we use a three-dimensional grid which provides space for each project and, in a sense, a series of common rules. The dimension, the constructing aspect of the grid, for example. May maybe unlike more traditional architectural exercise, student projects are, are not different proposals to the same seat and program equation, but a collective project on a shared site. Each project grew in the structure in a constant interaction with the others to form at the end a coherent wall inside the grid. But five or six years ago, I don't remember exactly, we decided, we decided to go further by going beyond the scale of the model and the division of the studio. The question then becomes how to build a house with 200 people. It may be just a reference, but I like to show the parallel with the book of the English architect Walter Segal and the first scale one construction with the students in Alice. And maybe the parallel of the question, how to enjoy designing and building your own house. At this time, I was starting the PhD. So we tried to conceptualize this practice. It was important to consider this element of the grid in a more general way. For that, we choose and then define the neologism of protostructure. The prefix proto means first, unlike infra, which means below, and introduce the notion of temporality by placing the structure before any evolution. Then the word structure means not just a construction, but also a system, more general. We can also define the concept of protostructure proto as a system of our construction that has the ability to adapt to changes due to the time or use. This structure is a starting point for its own transformation, both as a support and as an object of the process. It is destined to transform itself, to change its appearance and function, even to leave only its tra trace and to disappear completely. The nature of the protostructure is subject to use. Applied, applied to the architectural project, the concept of protostructure proto acts like, like a, a great game rule. It forms a collective basis for a process of individual appropriation. For my doctoral work, I finished three years ago now, I first studied architectural project to try to identify what could be what could be the form of this collective base. Then I, had, I added to the study a second part on the project of Alice Laboratory. It was a way of going beyond the socioeconomic environment of construction with the freedom offered by the pedagogical context. So to maybe better understand the implication of the concept of protostructure in the context of Alice, I leave now the talk to, to Laurent. Okay, so um, what you see now on the screen is basically the map we give to the student to their, um, to their first day when they come at school, first day of architecture, they get this map going through the program of the whole year. Um, there you can see it goes through a lot of different phases that I will uh, detail a bit more uh, afterwards, but it's really the framework that we use uh, to bring the students to, to be ready to build uh, themselves and together um, what we called the houses, which is not so literal as a house, but that is uh, the, the common construction that we do at the end of the, of the, of the semester. First phase is called measures. 
Um, there, what is important to us is that, of course, it's first year, first year students. So when they come, they have very different backgrounds. They come from very diverse school, diverse education. So measures is really about um, getting the, the common basis uh, to go further into the, the process of learning and the process of designing. Um, what is really important through all the phases that we, that we go through is the, um, the notion of craft, um, both in models and, of course, in drawing. Uh, the whole year, they draw by hand and they, they go through um, a learning of very specific uh, architectural drawing. So the image that you see is, um, is a moment at the, at the end of the first phase you see a lot of, uh, of plaster, uh, plaster cast, plaster fragments that are, that are the result of the, of the measuring phase. Um, during the measuring phase, uh, we encourage the students to go outside of the school and they get to measure um, depending on the year inside the city or close to the lake or in the, um, in the landscape. It depends a little bit on the, on the, on the topics. And what they have to do is to bring back uh, fragments to learn to draw them and to learn to interpret them in a way that they can um, cast it. Uh, plaster is a very important uh, material for us. It's always the material that we use for the, for the, for the st as a starting point because it gets to understand the positive and the negative um, side of space, meaning that you have to understand how to do uh, the molding. This is an example of a student's like, they use really basic material to do that. They use cardboard that they, um, they, they treat to, um, for, the, for the water, and then they pour in plaster, and then it will give this uh, formwork that you see. And that's really the first uh, approach with space. And it's really about, um, let's say, still depending on the, on the year, it goes uh, between a one-to-one -one scale already and a one to uh, 300 scale. So really more about uh, both landscape and really uh, small details. Um, all those fragments, of the, as you've been seeing in the first uh, image, um, they belong together. They belong together because the students, the measures on the ground that is defined by the, by the collective program. And what we do at the end of the phase is to put them back together. And it brings this, um, this image uh, here where you see all the, not, not all of them, but a part of the fragments done by the students being together. And it suddenly recreates um, let's say, uh, um, a fictive uh, landscape of the site they've been measuring together. So this is, the, this is really the image of the city that they've been measuring uh, separately put together. Um, then the second phase um, is called elements. Again, there, what is really important is to stay close to the, to the reality, to the city, to the, to the built world. Um, there an example of a, of a, of a small element uh, that is built in the, really in the city. And what we ask to the student is to, is to, to go on the base of the, of the measured fragment and to propose uh, an element that they can't implement into the, either the built environment or uh, the specific situation. It's already a very big jump and that is really important uh, inside the world program. Uh, this is already one-to-one -one scale. There, there are the, um, it's about the fourth week uh, of, the, of, the, of the first semester. So it's still at the really starting point, but we ask them to uh, directly take the material. We give them this, uh, these wooden members that are uh, quite, classical for us and uh, the, they need to design those elements that they can really again implement in the city and here an example a few example of um, no a few picture of one example that was about uh, the group of students they were 
providing themselves a tool to design in the city. So it's basically a folding, a folding table that you can move uh, around. And once you find some place where you want to design, then you stop it and you, and you use it. And what is really important is already to get um, inside the, the, the act of building, the act of putting uh, separate members together. And really there is, a, there is already, as I said before, this importance um, regarding craft is already this importance about detailing and about building uh, detailed uh, projects and very, um, let's say, to go not only on a superficial uh, approach, but to really get to, uh, get to build it and to be able to present it in a one-to-one -one scale. Um, again, that's the, uh, a collective moment at the end of the phase. There, the, 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 the different elements, they're not anymore into the, into the city or inside their, uh, their specific location, but they're brought back to the, to the school as a, as a collective moment of, uh, of discussion. And there you see um, maybe there, there are different parts where um, the students go through to reach those, uh, this, uh, this fabrication of, of elements. Um, so that was the second phase uh, with the one-to-one -one scale. Then we go back uh, to, the, to the studio and we go to the third phase, uh, which is called planes. And as you see, it's um, in some way, it's very literal, the, the, the progression of the phase as we begin to measure, then we do elements, which is basically the, the idea beyond elements was to, uh, to really understand uh, parts of architecture, meaning uh, windows, doors, stairs. So really uh, elements uh, in, their, um, in their basic sense. And then with planes, um, it's maybe the first um, approach to, to really space design. And there, the, 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 what we ask them is quite simple, but what makes it difficult at the same time is to start to, um, to create or to build a space with a series of planes. Uh, what is important as well in this phase, that's the last phase of the first semester, for us, and it's an individual phase, which is as well uh, quite important. Um, it's the phase where we have the first approach to protostructure. Um, there, the protostructure is the, um, for example, on this picture, is the wooden part that you that you see. Uh, again, the white part they're done as a, as a, as plaster cast uh, to to do the planes, but sometimes the the, the materials are a bit a bit different. But the idea is to, the protostructure is basically uh, to avoid the white and blank page when we start or they start their exercise. It means we give them a framework, a grid uh, that could be either uh, flat or three-dimensional and the material that will, that will be their starting point. And here again, um, all the vertical members, they are part of the protostructure, and then the students, she begin to, uh, she, she brings in the, those plaster elements that you see on top, but as well, they begin to understand the structure itself by bringing diagonals in and really creating a sense of, uh, of space with very basic uh, tools. This is uh, a drawing. Um, that's the, 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 type, the typical drawing that we ask them to do where they mix on the same page um, the drawing that, that brings them to the result of the, of, the, of the process of developing the project. So here we can see uh, mixed together, there are like axonometric details about uh, putting together the, the, the wooden nodes. There is a perspective that gives this idea of, uh, of insideness that is the, the already a key element of the, of the exercise. And there is the, the plan and sections that basically bring them to, uh, to build uh, the model and to project themselves in the, into the, the, the project. Again, an example of uh, that's a very small um, 
yeah, small part of the of the collective uh, exhibition at the end of the phase. That's basically the, the end of the of the semester, and there it's very. Um, there you can clearly identify uh, this idea of protostructure, which is basically the same grid that you see um, on each project. So basically each of the projects that you see is from one student and they all started from the same point, this wooden grid that is uh, then really um, allowing the projects to get inside and to be built uh, according to, the, to its frame. Um, then there is the, the um, in our uh, time frame, then there is the, the, the winter break. So there is kind of a, of, a, of a cut in the semester. And when they come back, um, we start with the phase of rooms. Again, um, very literal because we put together the phases that we've been doing before. Rooms means um, it's the, the, the extension of, uh, of planes and elements quite directly. So it means to really uh, create this idea of, uh, of insideness, of, um, the, the, of room. I mean, it's, the word is quite clear. For the organization, what is important, maybe I, I will go shortly go back to the, to the, to the global organization of the, of the first year. As Agat said, there are about uh, between 200 and 250 students. And those students, they are split uh, in 10 or 12 uh, studios. And uh, meaning about 20 to 25 students by studio. So it's uh, this group, they really work together. In the first semester, um, they do quiet individual work and um, they always have site in the city or in the protostructure, but it's really uh, individual. In rooms, what is important, it's the first phase where they get to coordinate their work inside the studio. Um, by group of two students, they have to develop a room and uh, the 10 groups of students, uh, they have to put together those rooms into a bigger protostructure, which is again, uh, quite easy to identify. It's the, the, the tri-dimensional frame um, that you see on the picture. And inside you can perceive the, um, some of the, some of rooms project uh, that are really taking advantage of the, of the protostructure. And that's where it starts this whole um, key element, uh, which is negotiation, discussion, um, a bit of, uh, let's say, space trading where they need to exchange their space to, uh, to, to coordinate where one project ends, where the other begins. And um, it makes this, uh, this part already very collective. Um, again, a drawing uh, from this, uh, this phase um, that's an individual, individual drawing, sorry, um, about one project. That's just to, to show you about the, the um, let's say, the, the craft that we, that we try to enhance uh, in this whole uh, design process. And then the model um, matching the drawing that you've just seen before. And at this phase, the students, they are uh, invited to already think about bringing in uh, some different materials, bringing in atmosphere, bringing in um, this, uh, uh, maybe a different lecture about this, uh, this, uh, this logic of insideness that they've been, uh, they've been seeing in the previous phases. Um, so another uh, picture of, uh, of collective uh, work uh, about where you see at the back, this, um, this, this uh, big protostructure where the different uh, projects that you can uh, quite easily identify, they mix together, they, they meet themselves and they really, uh, they really put in a, in a, into a dialogue uh, together. And um, after this phase, uh, there's where the, the big jump appears. Um, basically what we do is that collectively with the students and the teaching team, um, we choose or we select uh, either topics or part of projects that the students have been developing uh, during room. And we decide to put them together as a house. 
uh, again, the house um, is based on a, on, a, on a basic protostructure given by the teaching team and the students, they have to put together their different projects, there are 10 or 12 studio projects together inside this protostructure. And there, of course, uh, the negotiation and the coordination has to go to the next level as it's, it has to be built one-to-one -one, uh, on site. The image that you see is the first, uh, the first of, the, of the series of the houses. It's the, the house one that we built uh, on campus at the, the EPFL. And it was really uh, where it's all, let's say where it all began. Um, there, it was really seen as an experiment because when we started this whole process, we were not sure uh, if we'll be able to manage uh, this whole process to the end or if we'll be able to build it and have it done by the end of the semester. As it's really short, it's uh, twice 14 weeks, so the time flies by very fast. Um, luckily, or happily, it, uh, it worked fine. It just worked fine, and that's the, the result of, the, of, the first, uh, of the, this first experiment. But there, um, what is important is that this we don't see on the picture, we unfortunately couldn't uh, open it as a, as a, as a, let's say as a, as a, as a device uh, into the, the city or the campus. It couldn't be let open to the public all the time because of safety reasons and uh, Swiss regulations that are quite tough on this uh, on this level. So this really stayed uh, a bit enclosed in a, let's say in the in a building site state. Um, and then it's been dismantled by the, the, the midsummer, and the wood has been reused uh, first for another, uh, another uh, house project in Versailles as a workshop in, the, in summer. And then uh, the rest of the wood has been recycled to be used as the, the, the basic material for the, for the next year, for the element phase, for example, we use almost only a recycled wood from the previous years. So again, there is this, this idea to, to, uh, to understand the project in a very global way from the designing part until the recycling. So they have to build, but we have to take in advance uh, the consideration to unbuild what has been built and then to get the material uh, back to its cycle of construction. So that's the first example. Then um, there we'll shortly go through the, um, we did four years of uh, houses um, and I will shortly go through the, those, uh, those uh, three first and then the fourth one, I will go a bit more detail uh, about what happens in this house phase <clears throat> and how the students, they coordinate and develop their, uh, their design. So, there, the big, the big change um, for, the, for the second house, it's in Zurich. It was a, a collaboration with the, the, the art school in Zurich, the ZADK. And this time it's really in the middle of the city, uh, meaning it has to be open to the public. So there the students, they really got to, uh, in addition to the dealing with the process of design and building, they had to understand uh, the idea of uh, fire regulation, of uh, static safety, of what you can design or not in a public space and what will be able to, uh, to survive in a, in, a, in a public space. Um, so their protostructure was very different. It was um, applied to the, to the design of this, uh, this concrete bridge that you see above. It's the, the railway uh, bridge uh, connecting the, the city to the, to the airport. So there is basically um, one train uh, passing by each five minutes. So it's a very noisy environment. And there the students again, they did through this whole process of putting the project together and coordinating with the, the other studios. And that's the, the, um, the image from the, from the last moment of the semester, uh, the collective discussion with the, the students. Um, then for the, for the third one, the house three, um, we had the chance to be invited by, uh, in Brussels by the, the Canal Centre Pompidou, which is the, the, an antenna of the, of the Centre Pompidou uh, from Paris in Brussels. 
And there we were invited by the, by the SIVA, which is basically the, the architectural uh, archive and, uh, and mediation in, uh, in Brussels. And they invited us to, uh, to do uh, their forum space inside the museum where they will hold the conferences, exhibition, different events uh, for, the, for the opening. So this whole thing was designed and built uh, to be ready for the, for the first opening of the, of the museum. Uh, maybe some of you are familiar with it. And uh, afterwards, the, 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 well, during the process, there were um, an international competition um, for, the, for, the, for the building of the museum. And now they're under transformation and the museum should open again in 2023. So here again, it's not, um, it's not a totally public space. It's still inside a museum, but it's still open to the public. So basically the, the regulation, they are the, the, the same and the condition of the project, they are the, the same. But this time what is very different is that it's really already inside something. So really we were building a house inside an existing house. Um, and then the last one, uh, hopefully not the last one uh, at all, but the, the last one that, that was built and standing from uh, 2019 was in Evian-les-Bains um, for us just across the lake, uh, the Geneva Lake. And there, um, what is different towards the, the other uh, version is that this time it's not any more uh, compact design, but it's more about um, a series of, uh, that's why it's, this time it's called Houses Gardens. It's a, it's a series of, uh, of smaller houses and they're really part of the, of the landscape as Evian is very, uh, a city that is very different. It's more about the, it's really um, a slopey city uh, at the lakeside. And really there we got the chance to work uh, in beautiful outside uh, spaces. So this whole, um, this whole design process uh, starts uh, there with this idea. The, 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 the drawing you see is the, the Geneva Lake. Uh, Lausanne, if you see my uh, mouse, it has the number five where my mouse is. And Evian is basically the, the other side of the, of the lake. So we really did um, this idea of going through the lake and bringing a project through the lake into Evian-les-Bains. There we had uh, four different sites, um, which uh, turned to be two at the end. Basically we did at the site number one and site number four. And what is the, the particularity of those two sites? Uh, the number one, uh, the building you see in the middle of the site is uh, a project by Jean Prouvé. Uh, which was originally, um, Evian-les-Bains is a city of, uh, of, uh, of water. They have, uh, they have the, the, of course, you, you probably know the, the Evian water. And this uh, buvette was basically where, um, where the, the tourists, they went to, uh, to gather water, to drink water. And basically it's, a, it's an empty space um, uh, to uh, just to, to enjoy landscape and to, uh, to go through uh, thermal uh, holidays. And the number four, uh, which is the one I will talk a bit more about, um, it's not on the picture, but you can see below, there is this, uh, the, the beginning of the building. This building, it's a building by the, the French architect, uh, Patrick Bouchin, and it's called uh, Grand Jolac, which is the, um, uh, a concert hall. Uh, that was specifically designed for um, Radislav Rostropovic, the, the, the piano player, and is now used uh, for, the, for the Evian Classic uh, Music Festival. And it's a really, it's a, it's a wall wooden uh, concert hall. So those two sites, they are quite specific in their relation to, uh, to, um, to, to architecture. And basically, the, 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 the picture you've seen of, the, of this house in Evian, it took place in this site. So this was the, the site given by the students. And then they have to themselves um, find, find the, 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 precise, uh, the precise position of the, of the project inside the, the plot. So um, 
again here um, a very uh, basic drawing. It's a section of the of the of the ground uh, of the of the. Uh, what is important in the um, in this drawing is this idea of the the difference of uh, horizon and totally below you see the horizon of the lake, then the horizon of the first building uh, that I spoke before, and then the position of the um, of this um, this project plot. Um, what is important with this horizon is that again the students they're invited to think very collectively and to be able to relate the different project with the with the common referential. Um, those are two images of the of the plot before the intervention of the city, which is a uh, basically a beautiful uh, a beautiful park with uh, huge trees. And that's where uh, the design begin. Now, inside the, the, the studio, um, we have to organize ourselves um, to be able to detail the project and uh, the different parts to be able to build it at the one-to-one -one scale. And there, the students, they really have to, to get together to do a collective project, which means it's not the idea is really not to, to take a project of the previous phase and then to say it's, this is a one people project and we build, to build it together. The idea is really to get back to ideas, to, uh, to some uh, maybe materiality, to some things that, that the students are interested in. And the idea is really to develop with a group of 20, uh, 15 to 20 students to develop this project together. So it means uh, there it's, um, it's a scheme of the, of the organization of one studio of, uh, so a couple of people were dealing with the idea of materiality, what material can we bring inside the construction. Then in the middle, a um, um, couple of group of students were dealing with really a part of the of the of the project, so meaning the roofing, the the walls, the this the idea of interior and exterior, and then there is a, a whole bunch of students that are really um, dedicated to coordinate the project with the with the, their their fellow students and the other uh, studios and to uh, to deal with the logistic because that's of course a big part of the project. Uh, it's a lot of material, it's a lot of wood, it's a lot of screws, and this has to be, to be, to be dealt by uh, the students only. As the teaching team, we, we, we give the, the, the supporting uh, surrounding, but mainly everything is done by the, by the students. So that's their first drawing about the, the, the protostructure and its position into the, the landscape where they got to, again, they go through this phase of, uh, of measure that they've been doing at the very first part of the, of the semester and uh, with the position of the trees, with the coordination, where, where is their position to put the protostructure and to put the project. Um, and then it start this, uh, this negotiation with the different projects there. Uh, in this uh, protostructure, for example, there are three studios uh, dealing with the space. So there are three studios that has to coordinate together and to make uh, the most fluid uh, space possible. Um, so it means they go through um, still at this phase, it's a bit mixed between end drawings and uh, computer drawing, but they have to really detail. Uh, maybe you see on the, on the bottom right, there are already details about um, where to put the screws, what is the length of the screws, how do you prefabricate elements to assemble it on site? Because that's, uh, of course, a key element of the, of, the, of the design is that everything the students do, they have to, as much as possible, prefabricate the element. Then we move them uh, mostly with, uh, with, uh, with large trucks. And then once it's in, on site, then they have to assemble it uh, together. Um, again, we use those, uh, those classic tools. This is the, 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 the model in the middle of this phase, uh, the one to 10 model where the protostructure is already um, uh, coherent with the, with the reality 
of the of the building afterwards but the students they use this model to really understand the the, the special influence of their project inside this uh, this wooden grid and this uh, tridimensional uh, frame another example of those uh, one to ten model which all as well the idea is to to be able to be able to to help them to understand this process of prefabrication what can you do beside the model and then put the model as a group and it will be a, already a, a simulation of what will the the real building site be um, there i do a bit of uh, of a jump because there is a lot of uh, things going on in parallel um, in the middle of semester there's the is one week um, of political um, holidays, uh, which we use um, to build the protostructure. So it means in the process, the protostructure, it appears in one to 10 in the models in the studio, but then it's been built one to one inside by the students. And then in the last phase, they will come and bring their project inside the protostructure. And as I got said, depending on the on the project uh, of the protostructure, they might um, densify it. They might uh, operate changes on the on the structure, but the DNA will still be present. Um, the image you see is the, the 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 setup that we that we do with the students um, as the as a prefabric sorry prefabrication. Um, chain to do the, uh, the wooden members that will then build the protostructure. So what you see in, in, the, in the front of the picture, there are elements that are already ready uh, to be, they are already pre-assembled and then they will leave this hole to go to the site and then being assembled as protostructure, as you see here uh, on site. So basically it's the, 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 the construction logic is not always the same depending on site, depending on the, the, the size of the protostructure as well. But basically, it's always the idea of frames because for protostructure, as for project, prefabrication again is a very key element. So there the students, uh, they, they assemble those frames uh, on the floor and then uh, together at the group, they will lift it and put it together um, and sometimes it goes to quite uh, big elements. For this example, those, those last frames, they are uh, about eight meter high. So it's quite big elements. Um, what is really important with all this phase with the students, of course, safety is a, is a major issue. And uh, we provide them, uh, well, basically safety courses. Some of the students, they specifically train to be able to work in uh, in height and we help them with uh, scaffolding uh, let's say, um, scaffolding built by themselves inside the structure to help them to go forward and to to be able to 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 build the wall structure um, then again parallelly to to this phase the students they, they get to understand really this uh, this process of fabrication in the one-to-one -one scale what they do in the studio is really about uh, testing, about uh, really assembling the elements in details. And um, the whole process is always supervised by uh, engineer and, uh, and uh, contrary to, uh, to usual uh, building, the, the process is so short that we don't have the, the time to, uh, to go through the, the usual validation. So it means things have to go very fast and the students, they're really invited to understand by themselves what makes it, what makes the design resistant to, uh, to its future condition. For example, the image on the, on the top left, um, those, uh, those frames with the, with the, the the plastic uh, sheet in the middle, um, they are used to, um, to stabilize the one wall part of the structure. And then what the engineer asks is to say, basically it helps them as well to understand the static, is to say, okay, just put the frame in the position it will have in the protostructure, and then just put a lot of weight on it and to see where is the limit. 
And if the limit is um, below the tolerance, then the element is validated to its role, to its statical role. So it's really a, a very important part in the in the wall design to understand this uh, this uh, this mixity between, uh, of course, what architects want, but what the, the the public public space can accept, what the safety and what the, the the fire regulation can accept. And the other image, very different, is about. Uh, understanding how to uh, to cast concrete with uh, already having a, a pre uh, dimension of the of the iron and uh, really going through the this uh, this whole process of uh, of really uh, understanding and managing the, the the concrete. Another picture of this frame. Uh, so really. There, the, the, the work of any small elements of this, uh, this construction is been designed and uh, pre-assembled at the, at the school in their studios and then uh, put aside and then moved to the, to the site. And again, there, there's a couple of pictures of the, of, the, of the building site with the students dealing with the, the, the specific uh, materials together. And maybe there it's quite easy to, to build the parallel of the, of the second exercise uh, of the year I showed before, this idea of elements where the, the students they already uh, bring into the city with this, uh, this wooden one-to-one -one, uh, construction. Um, and there you see definitely some parallel. Uh, there again, a couple of images of the, of, the, of the building site. And then I will go fast through because I think we're a bit, uh, we might be a bit long, but the, um, those are, uh, let's say, the final drawings the students uh, did at the end of the, of the semester with already this idea of coordination between the different studios. On the, on the, on the bottom right, you see uh, the position of the project inside the city. So it's really, again, about this mix of, of scales. Um, and there, the, the, really the, the construction drawing that the, the, the students did as well, axonometric, um, the colors and the circle, they are the, the, the three different studios that worked on this uh, specific uh, protostructure. Then there are the assembly phases with the, the different elements. There you see the, the, the very specific jointry of the, of the wooden members and the, the, the mounting process. And the, the, of course, the, the students, they have to manage the, the amount of material they can deal with, the amount of screw they use, and the, the, the specific design. And again, a very similar uh, drawing to the first one. And then uh, very quickly, the two last si slides, uh, what I showed you a bit more in detail, there are three studios uh, inside the wall here of 10 studios. And there, there are a couple of pictures of what the other studios did and gives you a bit of a, of a bigger overview of the wall project of this um, 2019 uh, project. Uh, there on the left is the, the, the finished uh, construction of the, of the project I've been uh, talking about. And on the, on the right as well, but uh, the more central part. Uh, so we will finish there. Um, and shortly for, the, for the, what, what has been happening after is, of course, last year, um, it was a bit uh, different because of the, of the COVID, what was supposed to be the the, the, the fifth construction unfortunately couldn't take place. This year is still uh, not sure, but the idea is still to, uh, to go further with this idea of, of uh, one to one construction and uh, dealing with the, yeah, with the, with the construction. Um, on, the, on the bottom left, very shortly, um, there are a few uh, links. Um, the, the, the lab is called Alice. Um, there is the, the website of the, of the wall lab. And then uh, what is maybe interesting for you, the Alice blogs, um, during all the phases, we always ask the, the students uh, to post the, 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 all the work they do. Uh, so basically when you go to Alice blogs, there is the archive of all the work that has been done and that is on the process right now uh, with the students. And uh, I think it's quite a big, uh, a big uh, 
inspiration uh, in this sense. And um, and I think that's it. And I will uh, I will we will stop here. Yeah, thank you so much, Agat and Laurent. Uh, and uh, I I just find fascinating the cultural differences between between uh, both presentations. And uh, although we are speaking about learning processes and construction, it's really interesting to to compare. Uh, Swiss, uh, Switzerland and Sweden <laughs> in this in this context, but uh, I I think both both uh, were really uh, inspiring and also um, may uh, both presentations have a lot in common with things that we have done in in situ in the last uh, ten editions. So it's really interesting for us to listen to you and hopefully also to our students and teachers. So I open the debate um, and the questions for both presentations. Can I can I have a question? Yeah. Uh, yes, Gabriela. Okay. Uh, first, I would like to thank you for the presentation. It was really inspiring. I really enjoyed it. And about the last presentation that you did, I when you when you explore this ability of the part structure to adapt to change and the use. It was really clear for me how it is related with the materials and its lifetime. But I was curious about if you give a specific a specific function to the space, how you you explore this in the no, in the notion of the the proctor structure. Um, well, that's a very good question. Um, Relief photostructure for us has to be seen as a as a tool for design, and of course, it will it will give a, a very important uh, DNA to the to the to the building that will be that will be assembled afterwards. So, really, of course, uh, the students they have to um, to to take. Uh, advantage of the of the protostructure and to integrate it in the design itself it's not only what is really important is to not understand it as a basically not to understand it as a shelf where you put your project inside but really to integrate uh, the the notion of this uh, tri-dimensional uh, grid and uh, its implication into the space to integrate into the project itself. So it means that should be part of the project at the end of it. So it's at the same time, uh, the, 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 the physical support, the structure of it, and then the, the, the part of the, of the project. And maybe another point that is, that is quite important uh, to say is that the protostructure itself, it's, uh, the way it is designed, it is uh, statically not self-sufficient, meaning uh, if you build it uh, just the way it's designed, um, it's, not, uh, it's not statically stable. So the projects, it's their role as well when they go inside it to make it as, a, as one, so at a, as a complete piece. Thank you. I also have a question, maybe, or oh, let's say two questions, one for Laurent and then another one for both um, of you. Uh, for Laurent, uh, I was very interested about this um, uh, process of learning um, with, with that example that you get from the heaviness that engineer is saying to put more, more uh, heaviness on the top and to discover. Uh, being this a uh, very uh, short process, how does it work in uh, Switzerland? I can imagine you need a lot of uh, permissions for these interventions in the public space. Manage to to guarantee those aspects. And then a question for both. Uh, I was also very interested about the um, uh, 
uh, in both cases, it was a process that, that was growing from the beginning with something, uh, with some kind of evolution until arrive uh, to this one-to-one -one, uh, construction. Uh, and now you have already some students that did this process and they finished already the university. Uh, how can you uh, understand uh, the advantages, let's say, or what they could learn in their uh, process of uh, being an architect through those um, projects? Um, well, maybe first for, for your first question, of course, there is a, it's always very tricky. We had the, 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 the chance or the, the, maybe it's not a chance to, uh, to deal with the regulation of the, of the different countries as we did it in Switzerland then in Belgium then in France. So we've been a bit through the, the, this whole thing. Uh, what we do uh, to, to meet the regulation and to, to, to assure that we can uh, open and deal with all these questions is um, as the, well, inside the teaching team, we have a coordination team, which is uh, responsible for uh, getting uh, permits if needed, which is responsible to uh, take discussion with the, the, the fire regulator, with the, the, the different uh, person that should be involved in the validation for the, for the opening. But it's very, of course, it's very tricky. What we don't see, for example, in the, in the, in the, in the construction of Zurich is that the condition is, was that we couldn't leave it for more than two weeks because if it stays longer, then it changed um, its category of building and then we couldn't meet the regulation that was uh, expected. So then we adapt the condition and that was probably the worst case when we had to, of course, it's a lot of energy, it's a lot of, uh, of building hours for the students to assemble this whole thing. And there it was uh, in the city for two weeks and then it has to be dismounted. Um, but then uh, depending on the different situation, uh, for example, the one in Evian built in 2019, it's still uh, partially there. So part of the, the, for example, the part I've been talking a bit more about, it's still standing and it's still been kind of used in the middle of the park. So um, it, it depends a lot on the, on the situation that we try to do the, the best to, uh, to maximize the, what the effort can bring into the city and can last the longest possible. Um, and maybe for the, I can, uh, I can go directly to the, to the second question. Uh, well, it's quite difficult to, to appreciate it directly because we're not, uh, of course, we keep contact with, uh, with some of the, of the students, but it's, uh, it's difficult to see the, the direct impact into, the, um, into the, their, uh, their architect's life afterwards. But what I can probably say, or what I'm quite sure of is that when you start your studies with this uh, collective experiment and this idea of building yourself what you design, I think you, you bring a bit more uh, the idea of respect towards what you're designing and you have an idea what means a building site. Of course, there is no comparison to, uh, to, uh, to huge building sites uh, of, uh, of uh, let's say classical building, but still you get this experience of what it means. Sometimes uh, you have to build under the rain. The, the detail that you that you foreseen is, uh, is uh, eight meter high, then you're maybe not in the best situation to put it together. And I think those are elements that you always keep at the back of the, the head when you when you design afterwards. So I think that's one of the of the key elements that we can bring. And for us, uh, I think what is a uh, what is a big chance uh, is that this uh, this whole program put together by the by the by the Alice team is touching the whole first year students. And it's a bit different from a from a workshop uh, where you have 15 or 20 students there. They all work together and I think that's a, that's a, that's a big opportunity for them and for us of course okay then shall I Emilio yeah shall I okay you can, you can add whatever you think um, 
So, yeah, I would agree with uh, Laurent about the experience in a, of a construction site. Uh, that it's 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 a good insight um, for an architect and an engineer to have. And regarding like our students, because we also um, kind of teach a mindset. Let's say we are uh, very much oriented towards uh, sustainability, uh, social and envir environmental. We kind of like. Um, focus more on giving them uh, new tools for uh, altering their perception also of, uh, as Emilio said in the presentation, of what it means to be an architect and what, uh, how what they're doing affects uh, people and stakeholders and everything. So, um, I mean, some of our students, like myself, I continue on with um, the pedagogic aspects uh, of this. Uh, other students have been uh, hired as uh, um, city architects, uh, overseeing city projects. Uh, it's a very diverse set of what people can do after that. Emilio, you wanna add something? I agree, I think, I think you said it all. Okay. Okay, do you, have, do, we, do you have any more questions? Maybe from the students that are doing the workshop right now with us today? Um, I have a question. Okay, Tia, let's Hello. Um, I would yeah, like to thank you for both of the, the lectures. I thought it was very interesting. I just have a um, question concerning the, um, how you, both of you would teach um, the cost factor, or do you actually, is that actually a theme as well in your teaching strategies? Because I think the, to do this um, construct, like to work with constructional prototypes and teach that to your students is, it's um, very, very interesting. And also to kind of have the, the physical aspect of having a one-to-one -one model. And I was actually a student of uh, Jean-Philippe Vassal in Berlin. And there was the affordability um, was a big subject. And we actually learned how to calculate or learned, we were calculating as an exercise um, each part of the building that we are going to design. And that's something that really falls short in, I find in universities in general, because there's not the time to design and to calculate what you build. So that was just what I would want to ask. Um, are you, is that a, an issue at all? Or are you teaching that to your students, um, um, the financial side of things as well, or like the cost factor of things, let's say? Yeah, in our, uh, I can start with, in our case, um, we, um, I can, uh, well, it's a bit more complex than that. We, uh, we have a whole master program focusing on, on the sustainable aspect of, or sustainable perspective on, on architecture. And, um, and there we have a, a bunch of different courses on um, on project management, um, also on um, uh, sustainable architectural design and, and aspects like that, um, which uh, cost aspects are are included. And but when it comes to the more specifically the Dartable initiative, uh, like I mentioned, the presentation, the project management, so managing roles in the whole construction process. Uh, are rotated to uh, through all the students uh, every day. Everyone has to have the task, so that's the the managing of of the construction side. But also in that task is included the, the detailed plan of all costs. So uh, in the beginning of the project, when we split into teams that focus on different sections or elements of the project, they have a roof uh, budget, and then they have to make a very kind of precise calculation of all costs of materials from kind of number of screws. So it goes through very kind of sharp detail. Um, and that is also, I mean, it sounds like very peaky the way we we put them the, the boundaries in a way, but in a way it's also very appreciated because it, it becomes straight into reality in the first days of the course directly when they have to kind of count what is needed. And of course that along the project, we need to always adjust and to always add things on top and uh, and that is also kind of put into the consideration of the of the project management group yeah and also it falls on them to uh, make their schedule like what has to be done when estimate how long it will take 
how many people it will take to implement it. It's uh, it's all on them with our um, help and supervision mm -hmm. all the way. Thank you. Um, and yeah, for us, of course, um, this idea, I think the, the, the work process that brings you to the to the one to one, of course, it has to include at some point this idea of uh, of money or at least uh, quantity, because probably uh, most of the time we deal uh, with this idea of the, the quantity of material because well, when we do those projects, we have uh, either sponsoring or we have uh, there is a bit of, of money coming from outside, but we have a limited amount of uh, of material. So we have a limited amount of wood, and the, the this idea is then to uh, inside the, the whole first year they have to deal together between the studio to say if one studio uses more wood then one will of course use less. So this is all part of the negotiation that you that they do together. Mm -hmm. And um, and afterwards, if they want to introduce uh, different uh, materials, um, they have either a small budget by studio, they cannot uh, overgo, or they have to find themselves sponsors. So it means that they have to uh, implicate themselves in this idea of providing material, of this idea of, uh, of really getting to the source of the, of the things or to, to dealing with, uh, with uh, factories, uh, material providers. And, uh, and that's, I think that's, that's a big part of the project because at some point, um, you do the design and you have to limit yourself to, to, what is, to what is at the disposition. And the other uh, quantity that is uh, very important is the quantity of time that they have because those students, they don't do that 100% of the time. You know, the, the, the design project, it's supposed to be two days a week. Uh, of course, they do uh, over hours, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's an evidence. And at the end of the semester, it's two full weeks, but it's still not a lot of time. So it means you have to calculate the design that you will be able to achieve in this amount of time and material. So I think it's really, your question is right. It's really part of the, of the whole process to say, to prefabricate one piece, I need two hours. I am able to do 20 of them, depends on the team. So it's really about managing this, those whole aspects. Thank you very much. That was very informative. Anyone? Well, okay, I have a question for Loja, uh, which is, um, you, say, you said that uh, all uh, students start to, to work individually, so, so they have uh, a lot of freedom to develop it in the beginning uh, individual projects. Um, but then uh, um, when they get together in groups and when they get to the final projects, we see that there is a, um, a predisposition for an assemblance. So uh, for, for, the, for the project assemblance. So uh, I was wondering, uh, is, do you think that that um, comes from the imposition of the material from the beginning? I mean, meaning that uh, you decide uh, uh, which uh, type of wood and uh, or if they are as assembling wood or using screws or do you, do you, do you have a predefined pre uh, construction, si construction system? So it, it's going to be easier to get everything together at the end or it's a negotiation process. Uh, uh, how, um, um, what I mean is how much of the process are you, you teachers controlling from the beginning, right? Well, it's of course it's a it's very important and key question. It's it's very difficult to say because of course I would like to say uh, the the um, the good answer would be to say it comes from the students. But of course, as a, as a teacher, we shouldn't be so naive. And of course, we give them directions. We give them of course the the proto structure is giving already a, a big sense of what the construction will be, then you're totally free inside. Well, totally, you're free inside. But the, the, the wood assembly, the nodes, those they are given. And of course, the students, as they are, they are, not, uh, they are not expert in wooden construction, so they will 
learn from the detail we give them, we gave them, and they will inspire themselves from that. So it means that, of course, the the the, the thing will will come together uh, as something that is quite coherent. And the other thing is, I I think the 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 proximity with the the previous year students is very important because well that was of course the, the first year was a was a big experiment and we didn't expect uh, what we what we had as a result at the end but um, if we look at the at the at the further year then it's always a challenge for us as teachers to say we don't want to have the same results we want to push it further you want we want to have new results and it's really what can we bring in the in the global equation to have different results? What can we give as an input uh, to enhance this uh, this idea of diversity? And in the in the going through the the, the further projects, we began to uh, to to bring new materials in that brings diversity. And I think this is already a. a, a some uh, something that we can uh, that we can follow but uh, of course the fact that the students they are first year so it's really their first approach to architecture and they go through the same program means that at the end they have the same architectural basis so it means that they can cope together quite well i think this exercise is not as easy if you do it in a in a master program because the students of course they have a lot more of uh, let's say predisposition pre uh, pre uh, pre learning so it's very different because they have more specific ideas of what they want to bring thank you so much um, we have time for a final question i i would like to do a small question uh, if it's possible to understand the scale of different projects, uh, can we uh, think about how, how, how much is the budget for a project and how can we get the budget for this project? Where is the partnerships uh, that uh, the university work with uh, for both, uh, uh, for both uh, like uh, universities? Emilio and uh, Laurent. Yeah, I can, I can uh, disclose on that. <laughs> no, actually, the budget is always a, a, a very big issue. Um, those, uh, the, the the first project, the one uh, temporarily rebuilding the square, cost maybe five hundred euros. Um, it was mainly just a few tools, and most of it was material we recovered from the waste central station of, of Gothenburg. Uh, but then the most costly projects we have, have maybe a budget um, of, what is it? Uh, maybe 20,000 euros and, uh, or what is that? 200,000 crowns. Yeah, 20,000 euros. And that includes also honoraries for uh, a couple of external tutors and consultancy and so on. So for actual material costs, it goes around, yeah, um, five to six thousand, um, something like that. Um, but it, it can vary a lot. Depends on where you get materials from. Uh, sometimes you get uh, donations from uh, materials and um, for materials. Um, we our projects also got uh, kind of uh, went through a, a, a quite big of adventure. It was a. Um, uh, we were starting all of this in 2016 when there was an ad on, on uh, the Swedish equivalent to eBay of someone donating um, 500 wood, uh, uh, wood uh, how do you say, uh, wood uh, um, logs, yeah, uh, of six meters long <laughs> and donating them for free like that. And, and we had no experience, you know, <laughs> nothing. We just called them and said, we, we take them. And then uh, we just dumped them in some place and all these years we have been using some of that wood. <laughs> and that, that was uh, one of these uh, crazy adventures is like also uh, you go for what you take and, uh, and that's, we also get the students to learn. So every time we get a few new logs, we get the students to go there and, 
and saw everything by hand and take them and carry them on their shoulders. And so all of that is also the connection to, uh, to the material and back to the budget in terms of what it means to do things with your own hands. And, um, but in the latest project, we have been dealing more with quality as well because the, uh, we perceive this, this project that I showed you, the playground that was dismantled because of, of, uh, of being very kind of used. Um, it, it requests that lately we've been thinking more about uh, wood that is uh, 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 yeah, impregnated or pre-prepared uh, uh, so that it can last long out. And, and this, uh, it changes a lot also the, the budget and it changes the, the ordering of it and everything becomes more complicated in the projects as well, yeah. Um, and for us, um, well, it, there are always two sides. The, the first side is that the, um, as it is part of the, of the pedagogical program, uh, at the beginning of each semester, we ask for a bit of participation from each student, meaning that it could be for a, it's the, I mean, it's, the, it's a global amount of, of money that participates to, to a bit of the construction, but that's not, uh, that's not much. And then the very big part um, is uh, sponsoring. Um, the first one we did in Lausanne, it was about sponsoring directly with the, the material providers. Mainly it was wood, so what was there possible? Um, Switzerland, we have the chance to have a lot of wood and a, a lot of wood providers, so we could get a, a very, uh, very great uh, sponsorship uh, in this sense. And then another sponsoring for, uh, for uh, building site materials, meaning uh, scaffolding, helmets, uh, tools. The tools, they're always uh, sponsored. So it's been uh, uh, given for the, for the, for the time-lapse of the, of the building site and then it's given back. And then after this first experience, actually in, uh, in Brussels and uh, in Evian, uh, we were invited, so it means that it's a bit different. For example, in, uh, in the Canal Centre Pompidou, they invited us because, uh, well, of course, one person of the SIVA, they, they, he knew us, he knew we were able with the first year to build what they expected. So basically, they had a budget to do something in the museum for their part, and they decided to dedicate this budget to the first year of Alice to build something. So there was a bit of a risk, but the, the money came from there. In Evian, it was part of a, of a bigger event uh, around the Geneva Lake called uh, Lake 23, about uh, um, a quiet big thinking of the, this, the, the, the geographical element of the lake, because it's quite a specific situation because our side we're Switzerland, the other side is France, but we, I mean, it's 15 kilometers, but we almost never cross. Uh, there are a lot of workers coming uh, on a daily base, but we almost never go uh, there for tourism. So it was the idea of uh, bringing together this whole region. So the, this, uh, this intervention we did, it was part of, uh, of a bigger picture where there was a bit of money as well. So the, 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 the answer, they're really very diverse. So it means that uh, it's a case to case and depending on year to year. And uh, of course, afterwards last year, it didn't happen, but it was supposed to happen in Geneva again with, uh, with the local institution. So it's really about, uh, it's always one year in advance. You have to take contact with the, the sometimes people come to you and you don't have to do anything and the money comes and people say we want you to do that and sometimes it's about searching a lot of, uh, of partnership and uh, specific partnership for each part of the project so that's the, always the idea behind but the team is working a lot already in uh, already in the previous summer to build in the next spring so it's uh, it's about a whole year before the, the project can really take place Okay, thank you so much. I think it's uh, time to, to close. Uh, I'm, I, I wish to thank so much to our guest speakers because they kept schedule. So it, uh, it, it gave us enough time to, to, to talk and to have this debate, which was really great. So thank you so much. 
uh, hope to see you soon. Emil, you, you will we'll, we'll see you uh, in the final discussion on Thursday, right? Um, for the uh, this year mm -hmm. in situ. So, uh, Laurent, thank you so much. It was really nice meeting you guys and your work. And uh, to all our students, see you tomorrow. Até amanhã.